The other day I saw a friend of mine for the first time in quite a few months. Hadn't seen this friend because he and his spouse, his wife, had a new baby and they were taken up with all the events of caring for this birth, preparing for the birth, bringing a child into the world. And because their new child had some medical concerns, its first weeks and, and months uh, in this world were in the ICU. And my friend uh, had to uh, manage that. And uh, that was his life and his focus. And uh, he said that in the ICU, there were so many uh, stressful, uh, so much stressful information and tests and pressures and, and uh, uh, late nights that were happening. Um, he didn't feel like he was adequate. He was up to the job. So without his prayer, without his practice, and, and he described that this wonderful image that stayed with me ever since of him holding his newborn uh, baby in his arms, walking back and forth in the ICU with this uh, very vulnerable, vulnerable life. This child in his arms was uh, teetering in the edge of a medical emergency and my friend was praying uh, the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Son of God, amen. Um, this is what the heart intention is about. Uh, so it's this wonderful little living story, um, a, li a living icon of a father and child. Um, and this was the only thing that my friend could do. Uh, the other events and decisions and things, he didn't feel like he was adequate to make those choices without this kind of practice, without this continual return to his, what we, were, what we would call here in our progress or our approach, his heart intention in a particular way that focused his mind joining it with the interior movements of consciousness so that his mind was settled into this pure, simple act of contact with this life, this, this very vulnerable life, like a Madonna and child, but it was a father and child. And this is what sustained him through those days and weeks in the ICU. And when he met with my, me and my friends the other day, he shared this image. I just wanted to start this, uh, uh, this particular video, this topic, by describing this very, very real encounter with life. And uh, in its everyday aspect, you know, just being uh, immersed in the routines of life and, and its, and its uh, edginess, its, its, its crises. Of, of life and death, because we seem in our world to be pushed to more and more uh, to uh, issues of, of, uh, of great concern. So our civilization seems to be uh, unwinding, uh, disintegrating. The climate is, is, is getting very, very dire. The balance of life on earth, political uh, um, discord, war, uh, food shortages, we seem to be tumbling into a world of separation and things are falling apart in an in a apocalyptic way, it would seem. So what do we do? How do we navigate this uh, new world that we're handing on to our children if we have children? Um, how, do we, how do we carry ourselves in this world? One of the great Christian mystics from the Middle Ages, John Ricebrook, um, had a wonderful, simple little teaching. It's one of my favorite sources of wisdom from the tradition. He said, God breathes us out to love and act with kindness. And God breathes us in to rest in fruition. God breathes us out to love and act with kindness and God breathes us in to rest in fruition. What a wonderful insight into the unitive dimension of life that we're riding on the breath of God. We live and move and have our being in this divine mystery of God, and we're riding on God's breath, so to speak. God breathing us into life, 
into the world, God out-breathing us to love and act with kindness. Like my friend, um, caring for this child, just giving it contact and caring for his own broken heart and for his spouse and for his family in the moment of ordinary life. And then God breathes us in, Ricebrook says, to rest in fruition. This is the movement of centering prayer and heart intention is really concerned primarily with the outbreath of God, with being in life, with uh, a continual prayerful meditative stance, engaged active meditation, heart intention involves life, immersion in life, but it's, an, it's a unitive um, expression of life in which we're being breathed out by God in our practice, our, 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 our invitation and heart intention is to continually come back to those inner movements of consciousness, the breath, the concentrated, engaged mind, the surrender into the heart, the release into pure being that the four movements of heart intention describe. While in activity, while engaged in the everyday and the encounter with the crises that seems to be so prevalent in our world, the precarious teetering of a child, a newborn child's health, or engagement with uh, uh, justice, concerns, and service and action. Father Thomas Keating uh, said quite uh, aptly, uh, contemplative service is God in us serving God in other people. God in us serving God in other people. So this comes from a deep uh, insight into the indwelling presence of God that we are in, that God dwells in us. And Ricebrook's quote, quote um, about writing on the breath of God kind of complements this uh, insight by Thomas Keating by saying that not only does God dwell in us, but we dwell in God. We dwell in God's breathing in the world. And it's this unitive um, experience and insight and living reality that I believe is the answer towards my day-to-day -day navigating the difficulties and the ordinary challenges and the joys and the connections of life in this era. So centering prayer is really the resting in fruition. Heart intention is the outbreath into the world to act with greater love and kindness <clears throat> in a unitive experience of what contemplative service is, meditative action, which is being present to the divine in life and other people and being in that divine interconnectivity more and more. Just to give another uh, real example of this, uh, a few years ago, uh, I was deeply touched by young people, uh, teens and high schoolers and college students, immersion in the climate uh, crises um, and the uh, Friday protests and witnesses to, uh, to, uh, to the need to heal the planet and, and change our lifestyles and balance, return to a sense of balance with the created natural world were a great inspiration to me. So I would take the bus down to uh, downtown uh, and uh, on Fridays at noon for, uh, uh, for many Fridays and witness with the young people, with the teenagers, the Fridays for Future movement. I didn't decide to go into a more active um, uh, protest and uh, uh, witness nonviolently uh, to, uh, to this cause. Uh, this was my discernment that I could be a prayerful presence um, for these young people who were themselves putting, them, putting themselves on the front line. But the key to my engagement with that practice was a meditative stance. This was my rescue, like my friend in the hospital with his child in his arms. The only thing that he could do and the only thing that I could do in that trip downtown and my witness uh, with the young people was to continually come back 
to my meditative stance, my heart intention, anchoring my attention in the breath and the bottom of the breath cycle with my name of God, Yeshua, or Lord Jesus Christ, or life. Anchoring that um, attempted move towards presence in the divine presence, and I could be, uh, I could feel I was more present to the concerns of the youth and the issue that was um, before me in life. So uh, uh, the engaged meditation stance, and then and then I would return on the bus uh, exhausted <clears throat> because of my uh, particular. Uh, condition, a uh, health condition, um, and I would uh, rest and then come to my meditation shack here and rest in fruition, not only physical rest, but more importantly, the rest that centering prayer can, can provide. And so these two breaths of God, two breaths of the divine, go together in as a call into our world to uh, live more and more a life of unity with other people and with our own deepest intention for life, for purpose, life. Life is radiating love in being. This is my, or one of my affirmations of unity that anchors me with my intention, my purpose in the world. Life is radiating love in being. And I join that affirmation of unity, my heart's intention, with my breath, focusing on the, on, the, on the words, especially the second phrase, radiating, 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 in order to settle my mind and open my heart to the moment, to the sense of interconnection with other people, to, to the other people who are not, um, of the same uh, orientation as I, my friends or my family who uh, <coughs> are not seeing the same issues with the same urgency perhaps that I do, or with the same um, action, uh, to invitation to action that I do. Polarization and the splitting up of friends and family, this is one manifestation of the disease, of the separation wound that we're living through. So our, my practice, our practice, the invitation is to be not only present to the moment with breath and attention and awareness, not only focused in the mind um, uh, so that we can handle the decisions that make, that are made, that are coming up, um, uh, but also surrendering into the heart, the source of love and forgiveness and compassion so this is why the fruition of the Jesus prayer is a prayer for mercy. And the heart intention says that the inspiration to pray the Jesus prayer to have mercy on us unites us with this movement of interconnectivity, no matter who we're engaged in. I may not be able to be present in the same way to someone that's uh, of, of a completely different political or spiritual or religious uh, uh, perspective than I, but I can be present to them with my compassion and my love and my kindness and my prayerfulness when I can't engage in words with another person of a different political persuasion, I can engage with them in a prayer of presence. My presence, my surrender into the heart in love in hesed, in loving kindness, in mercy for us, uniting us with uh, the great outbreath of the divine. So uh, uh, Jesus said in the canonical gospels that anything that's done to the least of, uh, of the people around us, the least of them we do to him. So if we're engaged in a relationship with Jesus, with Christ, with the divine, however the divine in, is expressed in our world, in our path or spiritual path. It's an invitation to remember that this, this divine is in everyone and we are in it together. We're in this mess together. And, and, 
and the least that we do to anyone else, we're doing to our own God. There's a way in which heart intention and the unitive experience of life and centering prayer um, opens us to the reality that we wake up, we're enlightened, <laughs> or we're brought to fullness of union together. It's not an isolated act. We're not climbing the interior castle alone. We're not climbing the mountain into the divine Godhead by ourselves. We're on the journey together, especially in our era now, the era that we're living in. So hard intention, joining meaningful words of intention, inner movements of consciousness, and a deeper form of action. So uh, in the first row, row A, one of the intentions we've been exploring throughout our video course is a spiritual affirmation, not a religious prayer, but a spiritual affirmation. Life is radiating love in being. And this affirmation unfolds into deeper and deeper, more penetrating, simple, very simple one or two words that express more and more unity, awareness of unity and oneness. Um, the column, or excuse me, the row B, we're joining that in heart intention practice with inner movements of consciousness, with the breath, with a concentrated mind, with surrendering it into the heart, and with resting in pure being. And now here in this uh, video, we're, we're emphasizing that the heart intention, its fullness is to be expressed as a spiritual practice in meditative action, where we're orienting ourselves to God acting for all of us in being that we are in unity acting for all of us in unity, in being. And the more and more one practices this heart intention approach by joining that awareness of being in activity to others as a prayer. We're offering our prayer. We're living our prayer. We're walking our prayer like our, our, my friend was when he was walking up and down the hallway outside the ICU he was practicing the Jesus prayer form of this approach of heart intention. And with each step, with each contact with his, with his infant child, his child on his heart, he was praying the prayer of heart, the prayer of the heart in unity. And the child, the infant child, actually is doing much better now. They have to watch um, the course of the next months, um, his family and his parents, uh, but, but came through a crisis, and his father did too, through his practice and his love and his being carried on the breath of God, transparent to God's love, to Jesus for, and Christ for my friend. Um, so whatever intention one uses, whether it's a spiritual uh, intentions such as life is radiating love and being or a religious intention like the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Son of God, Amen. Or a Christian mantra, Yeshua, Maranatha, Hesed, Amen. The idea with heart intention is to um, use the words. We communicate by words and actions. Heart intention settles into this intent, this realization that our speech and our body and our mind, as uh, uh, some Buddhist would say, are all ways of communicating in communion, in, commu in communion with the underlying unity of life. So to use the words, the gift of speech and purpose and intentionality, and learn how to join that word that expresses one deepest motivation for life, either as a prayer or as an affirmation or as a mantra with action. Actions like picking up and caring for a child, like taking a bus 
uh, down to a protest, like researching how best to um, how best to be involved in in the actions of the world that we're facing, how one can do that in in balance with one's own commitments and and realistic life and health and situation in the world to be continually called forth out of complacency into a greater awareness of the interconnection and union and unity of all life and to rest in fruition we need that too i need that periods of silence and solitude this is what centering prayer provides and i suggest that the era that we're living in, if we listen to the signs of the times, the era that we're living in, a, a, an era of, of, of unraveling, uh, somewhat dystopic, perhaps, uh, with pandemics and war and climate crises, we need to have a different paradigm of meditation that engages with the world and also rests with fruition in a practice like centering prayer. So all the many years, if you're a centering prayer practitioner, that you've balanced life and centering prayer, continue in that, I suggest, continue with that uh, balance of action and prayer. And if you're a newcomer to a meditation practice, either as in the Christian contemplative tradition or in a spiritual and less religious way, might connect with the inspiration that's transmitted through centering prayer and uh, uh, the prayer of the heart and and find inspiration there for your practice in the world in an engaged way and coming back to a place of rest and repose and, f and realizing the oneness of all reality and living out that oneness in the world so uh, Heart Intention for Every Day and the Apocalypse is a dramatic title, but it's a real and telling and uh, rich symbol that needs to be complemented in hope and love and trust by the image, uh, say, that my friend communicated to me of him caring for his newborn infant, that um, on the breath of the divine enfolded into his heart centered in his heart intention or the Jesus prayer in a focused way, joining that with his actions and his inner movements of consciousness. He was doing what he needed to do, what he could do um, in the moment. This is all that we can really expect of each other and ourselves, uh, to do what we can do in the moment from a meditative, compassionate, kind mind and forgive ourselves when we forget to do it, which is my practice. The wonderful thing about the heart intention is that with whatever intention we're using, there's love, there's mercy, there's uh, loving kindness woven into the practice when we surrender into one's heart, the heart of God, and live and breathe into the world from that deepening awareness. So uh, thank you so much for your attention and your practice as you contribute to the unity of life and, uh, and uh, the healing of the world moment by moment. Thank you.